Cape Cod has recently become a white shark hotspot, which has created exciting opportunities and unique challenges. The Conservancy uses real-time research to work with town, state, and federal officials on public safety initiatives and educate the community to improve public understanding of sharks and inspire ocean conservation. Building on the tagging work we started in 2009, for the last four summers we've been conducting weekly surveys so we can estimate the regional and local population size of white sharks in the western North Atlantic. This season of data collection marks the fifth and final year of the population study. With Conservancy support, we've spent over 800 hours on the water, we've tagged 130 white sharks and identified over 350 individuals. Through collaborative projects, scientists from Canada to Florida are also utilizing resources and funds from the Conservancy to learn about this keystone species. I'm Warren Joyce with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada. In collaboration with Greg Scomo and using resources provided by the Conservancy, we're applying satellite takes to white sharks off Cape Cod in the hopes to learn more about their long-term movements. This is Dr. James Wilkowski from the University of New England. Greg is collecting muscle tissue samples for us, uh, which we will analyze for circulating levels of testosterone and estradiol. From that, we'll be able to determine if the sharks are pregnant and if they're sexually mature or not. And we're really excited uh, for this upcoming season uh, and all the support uh, from the Conservancy and Greg uh, in this process. Hi, I'm Gavin Naylor at the Florida Museum of Natural History at the University of Florida. We are working with white shark tissue samples collected by Greg and the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy to look at the extent of genetic mixing in white shark populations. There is still so much more to learn about the great white shark. With the Conservancy's support, we'll be conducting new studies, using new technologies, and answering important questions about this species over the next five years. Information gathered through research is paramount to the Conservancy's conservation efforts. Real-time science is incorporated into exhibits at the Chatham Shark Center, in our school programs, and at community outreach events. I went to the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy program over the summer and we played lots of fun shark games and learned a lot about sharks. This past year, we did a Shark Heroes class after school. I thought it would be very cool to have me and all my friends learn more about sharks, especially since we live near Cape Cod, which has a lot of great whites in it. When I grow up, I think that it would be very cool to be a marine biologist and study sharks and other animals. Lucy Swain knows a thing or two about great white sharks. They're one of the most misunderstood creatures. The 12 year old wants to be a marine biologist. So when she heard about a county commissioner's controversial shark mitigation plan for Cape Cod, she worried about what it could mean. I think that's totally horrible and it's going to totally ruin the ecosystem. And sharks are a really important part of our ecosystem. After several close shark encounters this summer, Barnstable County Commissioner Ron Beatty came up with the plan use baited drum lines to catch the sharks in the waters off of Cape Cod. Those who survived, the commissioner proposed, would be shocked. Dear Mr. Beatty, I am a 12-year-old ocean advocate. Swain wrote the commissioner an email, posting it on Facebook where it's been shared hundreds of times. The teen hoping the commissioner changes his mind. I hope that more people are educated about sharks and they aren't scared of them anymore. By supporting Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, you're advancing science, educating the community, and inspiring the next generation of shark and ocean advocates. Sam, what do you want to be when you grow up? One day I hope to take Greg Skolmo's job.